the heart of what it means to be a Christian, one who follows Christ, is to receive a new identity. In Jesus, we do not lose our true selves. Instead, we become our true selves only in Him. Men, your identity determines your actions. Think about that. The way in which you live and the choices that we make are rooted in who you believe that you are. We always make decisions that are in alignment with our identity, or at least who we believe that we are, what we think our identity is. Some of you might have noticed by now that your schedules are pretty packed and it's sometimes hard to fit this gladiator prep time in. That's because you don't yet realize that you're a gladiator, but you will. Others of you have been keeping up and staying on track. That's because you're embracing your gladiator identity. I want to encourage all of you. Everything that we're asking you to do is very intentional. It has a purpose. Even if it's hard, keep pressing on. Keep leaning into the Lord's strength to make this happen over the next couple of weeks. This is the kind of stuff, this is the game-changing stuff that will affect everything else that's going on in your life, believe it or not. By staying disciplined, you will find that less of your life is contingent on your own strength than you might have even realized. And I hope that you've been keeping up with your readings, that you've started writing Romans 8 at least once so far. If not, the time is now. We must sharpen our swords. We must prime the pump daily, guys. You have two more weeks to go before we all come together at the ranch. And I hope you're getting excited because I know that I am. God is going to move in each one of us. But remember, it's our job to show up and do the work. You are going to get out of this what you put into it. The reason I bring up Romans 8 is because that's where I want to start us out this morning in our time together. Specifically, verse 9. Romans 8, verse 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. Now, I want to point out one phrase in this verse, namely the phrase, belong to Him. Now, I want to point out six benefits that we have when we belong to Christ. These six truths are taken directly from Scripture, so that we're going to take each one of them one at a time. 1 Corinthians 6, do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price, so glorify God in your body. So the first thing we see here is that because we belong to Christ, we have the privilege and the power to make God look glorious through our new lives in Christ. We have the power, we have the capacity to make Him look glorious through our new bodies, through our new lives in Christ. The next verse, 1 Corinthians 7. For the one who was a slave when called to faith in the Lord is the Lord's freedman. Similarly, the one who was free when called is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. So there it is, men. There's the next benefit. It is the fact that you do not ever have to consider yourself to be a slave to men. Next verse, Galatians 5.24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and and desires. When your flesh was crucified, the passions and desires of your flesh lost their power. And now you are actually freed from the bondage that they held. Now, some of us don't live in that freedom currently, but it's the truth. You are no longer doomed to be controlled by the passions of the flesh. Powerful stuff. Next verse, Galatians 3.29. So then, 
those who are of faith, meaning those who are in Christ, are blessed along with Abraham, meaning that you are heirs according to the promise God gave to Abraham. Okay? So even though you may not be a Jew physically, you are spiritually because in Christ, those who belong to Christ, who is Messiah, you are the seed of Abraham. Therefore, you're an heir. And so what does that include? What does heirship include? Next verse, 1 Corinthians 3.21. So let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or world or life or death or present or future, all are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Men, all things are yours. Even death is going to serve as your personal attendant, your, your personal escort into paradise. As Christ belongs to God, you belong to Christ, and therefore, all things are yours. Next verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ, the firstfruits, meaning Christ was the first to be raised from the dead, and then at his coming, those who are belonging to Christ. Okay? At his coming, those who belong to Christ will be raised. So, in summary... There are six glorious benefits of belonging to Christ. Translated, belonging to Christ means being a gladiator. So, benefit number one, we can now make God look glorious. When you become a Christian, your life is made new. God has made you into something pretty incredible. He has made you into a new creation, and now you have the ability, you have the capacity to make much of Him. Before, you did not have this ability. You did not have this capacity, but now you actually do. Number two, we are not to be slaves of anyone or anything. In other words, don't be mastered by anything but Christ. The enemy's desire is to make you a slave to sin and hold you in the bondage of your flesh. But Christ, because you belong to him, you are not a slave. You are free. And number three, we are dead to ruling and damning passions. Men, you are no longer controlled like a puppet to the passions of the flesh. We are heirs of Abraham and all the promises of the covenant that God made with him. You're no longer controlled by your passions and your desires. Number four, as Gentiles, we have been adopted as a son of the Most High God. That means that we now have access to all of the rights of a son. Think about that. A son is not a slave or a servant or a uh, distant relative. He's the son. He has an inheritance, prized possession. Number five, all things are yours in Christ. We have, the, we have the rights of a sonship, meaning, but now what this is saying is that we will be able to enjoy all of these things forever in a resurrection body because what number six is, we will be raised. All of this because we belong to Christ because we have the Spirit of Christ, because we were bought by His blood. Enjoy your day, brothers. Hope is a good one.